Thank you for joining us again at Weimar College. I'm Dr. George Jackson, the Dean of Student Services here at Weimar College, and I have one of our newer staff members, Skip Dodson, who has just joined us here this semester. Skip, we are so excited to have you here. I know you, you hit the ground running. You're just so busy with things happening. Tell us a little bit about who you are prior to coming here to Weimar and what your experience is, and we'll talk more about what you're doing now. Uh, Dr. Jackson, uh, I'm so thankful to God for the varied background that he's given me. Uh, during my uh, adult life, I've done a master's degree in aerospace engineering. I also did a Master of Divinity at uh, Andrews University at the Theological Seminary of, uh, and also done construction work while I was uh, doing some of my academic work pastored for eight years, and most recently spent the last three and a half years as administrative director of the Adventist Medical Evangelism Network, also known as AMEN. AMEN, right, which is a wonderful organization. I know that's where I first met you when you were working in that's administration right. there. And I know you had visited campus when they had meetings here and so forth. Exactly. Okay, so you were, had done all that, and I guess uh, Weimar starts coming into the picture for you about the needs that we had here. and you were thinking about changing or some, or there was another job, right? So some things started happening in your life and we were part of that. What happened with you coming here uh, through all that? Well, I need to back up and mention that uh, four years ago, uh, a guy named Don McIntosh, who you know. We all know Don, and, and, yeah, and, yeah sure. we love. Don called me four years ago and tried to get me uh, to consider coming to Weimar then when, when the, the real... Uh, That's when I first when came the and new everything start was starting, right? Was, ...was happening. And uh, at that moment, we, we didn't see the, the Lord leading us in, in the Weimar direction. But we had felt uh, over the last several months that it was time for us to move on from Amen. It's a great organization and we still support it. In fact, I'm going to be speaking... Uh, at the first Amen conference in Australia, just in another uh, month or so. Exciting. But um, the um, the thing that really propelled us towards Weimar was the the fact of the needs here and how they so evenly matched up with our particular gifts. We did have another opportunity. We had a, an official call from a very well known and, and very well liked conference in North America. And as we were up there checking out that call, I mean, my wife and I both were saying, you know, this is like a dream job, you know? Who, who could say no to this? Beautiful location. Beautiful location. Nice churches. Good churches. Yeah. Great leadership. And, uh, uh, but as we sat there in the Walmart parking lot, just talking it over, we realized that that was not the place. Even though it looked so good, it was not the place that God wanted us, that He really wanted us here at Weimar. Okay, and, and I guess you knew that we had great needs that fit your skills. We weren't sure what we were going to do in our theology program, in our religion department. So something then happened that helped cement you coming in this direction. What, what happened then that helped you finalize that decision, I guess? Well, you know, we, we made the decision to come based on the fact that they needed someone who could teach Greek, someone who was a believer in the health message, someone who believed in Ellen White's uh, and, and wanted to practice Ellen White's understanding of education, and someone who also had practical skills, which, you know, we developed over the years in, in our uh, carpentry uh, That exploits. pretty well sounds like the sort of people we need at Weimar. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. And that's so right. I, as I looked that over and, and as I talked with some people about it, I, they, you know, we, we came to the conclusion that they're just those kind of people don't all grow on trees. Uh, and so I realized, yeah, this is where God wanted us. So I said, Lord, I see where you want us. We're going to go, but I need you to do something for us to confirm the decision, and we need you to sell our home. Now, that sounds fairly innocuous, but... In this economy, in, this economy, in New Mexico, yeah, oh, yeah, and, and we lived, tough. We lived in the wilderness of New Mexico where there, you have a county the size of Connecticut, and there were 3,800 people in the entire county. I mean, this is way out in the middle of nowhere. There's no industry out there. There's nothing. God we have a brought house us, that needs to and sell. we have a house that we had a house that needed to sell there. God brought us one buyer that fell through. I mean, this was just within weeks we had a buyer. Then a second buyer came along, and 
that looks like it's going to go through without any problems. We should be going to settlement within a couple of weeks. But in case that buyer does fail, there's a third buyer that's offered to pay cash. Wow. So God has made it abundantly clear through that uh, confirmation that he really did want us here at that Same thing happened to me in Australia. Was our house was unfinished. We weren't even living in the country. We were in Canada and somebody came and bought our house. Uh, so amazing. I understand how yeah. God leads with Incredible. those sorts of things. They're very, it really does give you direction. So all that happens and I know the need was great here because we were kind of wondering, Boy, this, what are we going to do? We really need him here. And God opens the way. You came here for a while. Your, your wife finished. Tell us about your family. Stayed behind for a while. Uh, right. You know, when, kids, when, you, when you sell a home, there are things that need to, you know, just logistics oh, yeah. that need to be worked out, details. So my wife and children stayed in New Mexico for about five weeks. And then just the week before the fall pack time, I went back. I had to do a wedding there. And then we all drove our stuff out here in the you know, Penske truck, arrived uh, early in the week of pack time, unpacked. And we're pretty much have house set up. And it, it's so great to be reunited, reunited with yes. my family. Yes, uh, that's uh, exciting. And I know that's always a sacrifice when that happens. So you're here, you're, you're, you're inspiring our young people. What are the classes, some of the, maybe talk about the classes and your vision of what you'd like to do in the department. That well, this semester, uh, I'm, I stepped right into teaching intermediate Greek, which some of the students desperately needed. Uh, I'm also overseeing a group of students that's taking beginning Greek as an independent study. So it's, it's been a real Greek semester. And then uh, also I'm teaching church ministry and leadership, which is such a vital need for uh, the Adventist church at the present time, is to have pastors that are solid, Bible teachers that are solid, and then uh, a, a really fun class that I really enjoy is Pauline theology. You know, digging into the heart of the New Testament, seeing what Paul says about the great themes of Scripture. I mean, it's just a Inspiring rich class. class. It's a yeah. rich, rich class. Now, you were saying, we were chatting before, and you, there's things you want to, you see coming together in ministry with what your vision is very much matches the Weimar vision. So briefly, what was that that you, liked, you would like to see happen in ministry well, it, and training? Dr. Jackson, it kind of goes back to my own background to some degree. I believe the Lord prepared me to come here and that he prepared you to come well, here. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, you know, did. And, did. And, and, and the other faculty members that are here. But uh, what I see happening is God is bringing together the, the lines of his work and, and unifying He's, he's uniting educational work with uh, practical training. He's uniting uh, practical training with health work. He's uniting health work with ministry and evangelism. Those kinds of things. I see the, the, the Seventh-day Adventist pastor of tomorrow, and maybe even late today, is going to be a pastor who understands how to build things, the Seventh-day Adventist pastor of tomorrow is going to understand how to administer simple treatments where it's appropriate in a responsible way. He's going to have an, an understanding of anatomy and physiology. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventist physician of tomorrow, and maybe late today, is going to have an understanding of how to give a Bible study, how to preach a connected, powerful evangelistic sermon. These kinds of things are coming together at Weimar in a way that I could only dream about 20 years ago when I became a Seventh-day Adventist. It's amazing. We were just chatting back in San Francisco, Tyndale, the same model back in Ellen White's time or soon after Ellen just White's Just after, time? yes. Uh, they El did that sort of thing, didn't they, when El they brought things together in San yes. Francisco? Yes. Elder Tyndall's ministry in San Francisco was one that integrated all of these aspects and his success, actually, was phenomenal. And so those kinds of things, uh, you know, the educational work coming together with the minister, ministerial training and the health work, plus that all being couched in the, uh, the context of practical skills and ministry. I believe this is the key that will help us to work the cities in the way that Ellen White envisioned. 
Boy, that is just so exciting, and I just, I can, I'm with you on, on we want to train these young people to do that. Absolutely. So we're looking forward. We're glad you're here. Dr. Jackson, I not only happens. want to train them how to do it, I want to participate get out with there and them do it. in doing it. Absolutely, me too. And, so, and I don't know where I could do yeah. that mm -hmm. other than a place like here. That's what we want to do. So, Skip, we're, we're, we're out of time, unfortunately, and we could probably talk another 20 minutes. We're happy that you're, we're, we're so glad that God directed you and your family here, that he opened the way with selling your house, and we look forward to great things happening. And all these other classes you'll be teaching, mentoring our young people, we're, we're looking forward to a bright future and God continuing to bless in bringing your ministry here. So thanks again for joining us, and do have a blessed uh, day.